Welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we dive into the stories and mysteries behind everyday things. Today's question comes from one of our curious viewers, Ashkicker92. Thanks for the suggestion, Ashkicker. You asked, what is the process of human cremation? A bold question, Ash. Not everyone wakes up and thinks, hey, what exactly happens when we turn grandma into ashes? But you did, and we're going to answer it. Cremation is one of those mysterious things that everybody knows about, but few people actually understand. So, let's walk through the fascinating, fiery, and yes, surprisingly scientific process of human cremation right here on Explaining Everything. Before anything gets hot, paperwork comes first. That's right, even in death, bureaucracy wins. The funeral director has to verify death certificates, permits, and identification. Because the last thing anyone wants is a mix-up like Oops, we toasted the wrong Uncle Bob. Once cleared, the body is placed in a combustible container, basically a fancy cardboard or wooden box. You don't just toss someone into the flames like a medieval bonfire. The container ensures the process is clean and dignified. Think of it as the body's final packaging. Amazon Prime, but one-way shipping. The cremation chamber often called a retort, is preheated to around 1,400 to 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, 760 to 980 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than your oven, hotter than lava cake, and only slightly less hot than your phone after watching TikTok for three hours straight while charging. Once the chamber is ready, the body in its container is carefully placed inside. The heavy door seals shut. No audience participation here. This isn't a campfire marshmallow situation. Now comes the part everyone's curious about. The heat inside the chamber is intense enough to vaporize soft tissue, muscles, organs, skin, all reduced by fire and heat. It's kind of like slow cooking, if slow cooking were done at nuclear reactor levels. Contrary to some dramatic myths, the body doesn't explode. Hollywood lied. What actually happens is a gradual breakdown. The flames and heat drive off water first, then the organic matter. Bones, being tougher, stick around for most of the ride. This stage takes about 90 minutes to two hours depending on the size of the body. Yes, size matters in cremation. A 90-pound grandmother takes less time than a 300-pound retired linebacker. Cremation machines are strong, but physics is physics. The retort has a secondary chamber to make sure smoke and gases are fully combusted before they leave the stack. Translation, no one's grandma is floating up the chimney like some kind of ghostly barbecue. By the end of this stage, what's left are bone fragments and small bits of metal. Yes, metal. Surgical implants like hip replacements or dental fillings don't exactly burn up. They survive like stubborn leftovers at the bottom of the fridge. These are usually separated and recycled. Fun fact, some crematories collect tons of titanium from medical implants every year. If Iron Man were real, he'd definitely be sponsoring crematories. Here's the part where cremation gets surprisingly industrial. After the fire show ends, the chamber is cooled and the bone fragments are removed. Now, when people imagine cremation ashes, they think of fine gray powder, like fireplace soot. But straight out of the chamber, it looks more like chunky gravel. 
That's where the cremulator comes in. Yes, it's really called that. Sounds like a supervillain's weapon. The cremulator is basically an industrial grinder. It takes the bone fragments and crushes them down into a consistent, sand-like texture. This is the ashes families receive. The average adult produces about five pounds of cremated remains. That's right, no matter how tall you are, the end product is surprisingly modest. If you are expecting a gallon bucket, sorry, you're more of a family-sized bag of flour. It's at this point that funeral homes transfer the ashes into an urn, or if the family hasn't picked one, a temporary container. And by temporary, I mean a plastic box that looks suspiciously like something you'd store rice in. Dignity has levels, folks. You might be surprised to learn that crematories take identity checks super seriously. There's usually a metal ID tag placed with the body before cremation begins. That tag survives the fire and follows the remains all the way to the urn. It's the system's way of making sure the right ashes end up with the right family. Think of it as airport luggage tags, but with a much higher emotional cost if something goes wrong. Sorry, we swapped your Aunt Linda with Mr. Johnson. Yeah, no, not happening. Every step is handled with dignity and respect, even if the science behind it is fiery and mechanical. Cremation might sound like a wild ride through a giant oven, but professionals treat it with care. Families get the remains, along with peace of mind that the process was done properly. It's strange, isn't it? Something that sounds so intimidating, reducing a human body to ashes, is actually a methodical, respectful, and even surprisingly efficient process. Cremation turns the body into its simplest form, allowing families to remember the person without worrying about the details. And hey, now, the next time someone whispers, but what really happens during cremation? You'll be the one who knows. You can even tell them about the cremulator. Just maybe not at dinner. If this answered your burning question, don't forget to like, subscribe, and that's the fiery truth behind cremation. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.